Good morning, Campbell Chapel. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Please rise as we have our doxology and call to worship. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. Son and Holy Ghost. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. is better than a thousand. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Let us join with the young voices of praise as we sing our opening selection with uplifted voices. Let's show them a little love. Your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are, and you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are, and you are 
Because God is good all the time. Yeah. However, I don't know who she designated to do the prayer. I think it says James Gilliard. That's her default. Robert got the prayer. So we're going to call on Robert to do the prayer. And uh, I think the Johnsons have the scripture reading. <laughs> Let the uh -huh. church say amen. Let the church say yeah. amen. God yes, is we'll good. Mm -hmm. Let the church say amen. All right, we talk later. Mm -hmm. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, let the church say amen. Our scripture readers, come forward. over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majesty. Amen. 
church. I'll be reading the New Testament, Luke, third chapter, 20 verse, 21st verse to the 22nd. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended into, into a bodily shape like a dove upon him and came from heaven, which says, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. that dwells below the skies. Christ our Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Amen Because of the times we live in, uh, Sister Victoria Smalls is being quarantined. She doesn't, she's not positive, she's just being quarantined. And she has Sister Angela Douglas and uh, she's being quarantined, not positive, but being quarantined. So we're going to call on the ram in the bush, Sister Aline Mitchell, to read our morning announcements. Good morning, church. We welcome you today to our second Sunday youth services. We're so happy that you're here. We also welcome our first time visitors and also those who are in the sanctuary and by Zoom. The announcements. The combined Board of Stewards and Board of Trustees meeting will be held Tuesday, January 11th, 6 o'clock p.m. The MLK Observance Committee's fourth annual Black Excellence Ball, Friday, January 14th at 6.30 p.m. Our own brother Michael Lewis will be honored. Campbell Chapel has reserved a special table. Ten seats are available. The cost to reserve a seat is $75. Please call the church office to make your reservation. Also, please keep our sick and shut-in members and families in your thoughts and prayers. I believe that is all of the announcements that I have. Have a blessed day, and our pastor will come before you next. Amen. Our own brother Fred Hamilton has been re-elected to the town council and has been, amen. <laughs> He is also the town mayor pro tem. His swearing in is on Tuesday. And because his swearing in is on Tuesday at 5 p.m., we're going to move the combined board of stewards, board of trustee meeting to Wednesday at 730, right after Bible study. Now, you know the trick in that. We're hoping some of those stewards and trustees will become active members of the Bible study before they become a part of their meeting at 730. So Bible study 630 on Wednesday, combined meeting 
7.30 on Wednesday. And that's for this month only. You heard the announcement about the ML King um, committee and their banquet, their masquerade banquet. Some of us have some concerns, even though they're practicing full COVID-19 precautions. And if you're in that category, uh, we ask that you still support it. So take the case of the first family, myself and my wife. We're going to pay for our tickets, whether we show up or not. And there are 10 tickets reserved for Campbell Chapel. I, I think a few others are going to follow us. Uh, if you can be there and you feel comfortable, please come. If you don't feel comfortable, uh, let's show that we do support the ML King Committee financially by paying for our tickets. Uh, that will, of course, take place on the 14th. So if you haven't made your payment, try to do it right away like today. Amen. Amen. Now. It is my honor and delight to present two wonderful candidates for baptism. We're going to ask the two families to come forward. And I need to find out which child is the older because we will baptize the older before the younger. But we're going to do it together. So two families, if you'll come forward. Because we're close, I'm going to wear my mask. some big boys so I may have to use some help dads or godfathers whoever you choose to designate dearly beloved for as much as all people are conceived and born in sin and that our Savior Christ said none can enter into the kingdom of God except he or she be regenerated and born anew of water and of the Holy Spirit I beseech of you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ that of his bounteous mercy he will grant to these children that thing which by nature they cannot have. That they may be baptized with water and with the Holy Spirit. And received into Christ's holy church and be made a lively member of the saints. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God. Who of thy great mercy did save Noah and his family in the ark from perishing by water. And also did this safely lead the children of Israel, thy people, through the Red Sea, figuring thereby holy baptism, and by the baptism of your well-beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in the river Jordan, did sanctify water for this holy sacrament. We beseech thee of thine infinite mercies, that thou wouldest look upon these children, wash and sanctify them with the Holy Spirit, that they being received into the ark of Christ's church, and being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and rooted in love, they so pass the waves of this troublesome world, that finally they may come to the land of everlasting life, there to reign with thee, world without end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh, merciful God, grant that the old Adam and these children may be buried, and that the new person may be raised up. Amen. Grant that the cardinal affections may die in these children, and that all things belonging unto thee may be raised up. And the church so say, Amen. Grant that these children may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. And the church said together, Amen. Grant that whosoever is dedicated to thee by our office and ministry may also be endowed with heavenly virtues 
and everlastingly rewarded through thy mercy, O blessed Lord God, who doth live and govern all things, world without end. And the church said together, Amen. To the families and specifically to the parents, dearly beloved, for as much as these children are now presented by you for Christian baptism, you must remember that it is your part and duty to see that these children be taught as soon as possible and the nature and meaning of this holy sacrament. And that they may know these things the better, that you shall call upon them to attend regularly the appointed means of grace, such as the word and ministry of public and private worship. And further, that you shall provide for these children the opportunity to read and to discover the Holy Scriptures, to learn the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and all things they ought to know to their own spiritual health and growth, that they may lead virtuous lives and be brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen. Do you thereby solemnly engage to fulfill these duties as much as life in you as the power of the Lord will be your helper and the response is we do. Hear the words of the gospel written by St. Mark in the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. And he brought young children to Christ that they should touch him. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said to them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say to you, whosoever shall not receive these into the kingdom, who shall not receive the kingdom as a child, shall not enter therein. And he put his arms upon them, and his hands upon them, and he blessed them. Amen. Dad. Of, of God, Father, come join me over here. I want you all the way. We just set you aside to be inside the chancel rail. If you hold his head over that. Name this child. Caden Donovan Stevens, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and let the church say together, Amen. Oh, he did well. He doesn't like water in his hair. Amen. Father, come on up. I'm cheating today. Yeah, hold his head over there. Name this child. Layton Cole Washington. Layton Cole Washington. We baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you all to turn. We're going to take a couple of photos and then we'll let you go back to your seats. Do you want to get them from which you want them this way? Oh, you're, we're good. He has the photos. Ladies and gentlemen, receive the two newest members of our congregation with hearty applause. Amen. You may return to your seats. Baptized, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes, I. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. 
It doesn't get any better than that. You know what God told us to do? Jesus himself, God in the flesh. He said, go ye into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we did that twice today. Let's give the Lord a praise. I'm going to make a teaching moment and then we'll receive our offering. There are different polities on, on baptism. Some people practice only ba uh, believer's baptism, which means they only baptize people who can confess faith. Uh, in the AME church and in most Methodist churches, we practice two kinds of baptism, covenant baptism and believer's baptism. Covenant baptism is uh, modeled after circumcision in the Old Testament. The sign of the covenant in the Old Testament was circumcision. And so when a child was eight days old, they put the sign of the covenant on that child. It's a commitment of the family that they will raise the child in the faith. And the Bible says if we train a child in the way that he or she should go, when they're old, they will not depart. If you bend the tree in the right direction, it should grow up and be a strong tree. Both are practiced in the AME church. So those who are born into families of faith, we practice covenant baptism. Those who come to the faith after uh, receiving the age of accountability, we practice believer's baptism. Every family has their own choice. Amen? One last word. We don't get caught in the water. You can be poured, sprinkled, or immersed. We don't care because there's no power in the water. The power is in the spirit. Amen. And that is one of those um, areas where if you have a different polity, we're not mad with you. We're okay. We don't have to agree on every T and every I, do we? At this point, we're going to receive uh, our morning offering. Most of us have already given. But if you have not given and you're in the sanctuary and you raise your hand, the ushers will serve you. If you'd like to come to the tithing boxes over here, you may put your offering into the tithing box. We thank those who are online that they've already given by coming by the church, by electronically online, by bill pay through their bank accounts or whatever method they chose. We're going to call on this uh, Young Voices of Praise Choir to lead us in a selection as we worship the Lord through giving.
I don't have favorites, but I have to say the young voices of praise makes me smile. So put your hands together for the greatest young youth choir in all African Methodism, the young voices of praise. I can take it 
know that I can take it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands I know that I can take it I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way as they find their seats. And we're going to ask uh, our young folks to get their cahoots ready, and uh, we're going to um, invite our choir to their seats in the front. Those who are young at heart, you can get your electronic devices prepared also. Amen. We're going to acknowledge the presence of God that's in this place, the great leadership he's given us through our bishop, Bishop Samuel Lawrence Green Sr., and our supervisor, Supervisor Phyllis N. Green. We acknowledge the greatest presiding elder in all African Methodism, presiding elder Philip C. Anderson, and his queenly wife, Sister Sandra A. Anderson. To the best thing God ever gave me after Jesus, Sister Donna Black, show her a little love. And to her husband, to our ministry team, to our board of stewards, board of trustees, our class leader council, our musicians, our AV team, our students, all of our other ministry chairs, officers, visitors, and friends, we greet you in the joy and the love of the Lord. This is our Youth Sunday, and uh, we're going to have our scripture reading through video. I think you have to click on the video. Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 10. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun, 
him move and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? Genesis chapter 42, verse 6. Joseph was the ruler of the land. He was the one who sold grain to all the people of the land. When Joseph's brothers came and bowed to the ground in front of him. Let's pray. Lord, we need a word. We need a word that can change our lives for the rest of our lives. Hide John Black behind the cross. No one needs to hear from him. But speak a word to him and speak a word through him that your people may be edified. Speak a word to him and speak a word through him so that someone will be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sermon title, The Seven Principles of a Dream. Okay. Well, we're going to need the PowerPoint for our sermon. Our sermon title was The Seven Principles of a Dream. And in church school, our children listened to Martin Luther King's sermon, I Have a Dream, and they talked about the power of dreams in their lives. And they realized that Martin Luther King Jr. did not invent his dream. He actually got his dream inspired by the documents that formed the United States of America the Declaration of Independence, and the preamble to the Constitution. That's where he found the, the, the uh, spiritual inspiration for the I Have a Dream speech. We also discovered that many of our young people have already witnessed the manifestation of M.L. King's dream in their lives. M.L. King talked about a time when black boys and black girls to, could walk together and all of our young folks have close friends who are from all kinds of races, uh, different ethnic groups, creeds. That, that's not an issue for them. They are walking in parts of the fulfillment of King's dream. But we also discovered that the dream isn't complete yet. And there's still areas that need to change in our nation for our nation to live up to all that King dreamed about. Then we discovered that we all have dreams God gives each and every one of us a dream to guide us through our lives. And so we're using the life of Joseph to look at the seven principles of a dream. And the first principle of a dream is that all infant dreams are absurd. When God gives us a dream, it is so different than the world we're living in that it seems absurd. I'm going to ask one of those older young at heart people, what does the word absurd mean? You can Google it if you want. S silly. That's a good term. It seems silly. When, when God tells a little eight-year-old, you're going to be a, a rocket scientist, that seems silly. I'm just eight years old. How can I be a rocket scientist? When God tells someone in a nation where they're fighting over civil rights issues that there's going to be a time when people of every different ethnic group will walk together in harmony, that seems silly. When God tells someone who has been struggling with sin issues that they're going to be born again and have a whole new life and start all over again, it seems silly. And so instead of saying silly, we said absurd. All infant dreams are absurd. Slide, next slide. Aborted dreams never come to pass. Now, we discussed this in our church school this morning. If you don't do anything with your dream, just have a dream, you might as well not have one. If you don't do anything with it, it will die. And if your dream dies, it will never come to pass. We can go through uh, any major city and find parts of that city where people are living with failed dreams. We're in the richest country in the planet. We have more opportunity than any other country in, on the planet. But everywhere we turn, we can find little pockets of aborted dreams. Aborted dreams never come to pass. Never come to pass. It's okay to have a dream, but you got to do more than just have that dream. 
Next slide. Infant dreams require intense nurturing. Uh, how many of you got a little person in your house, children? How many of you got a younger brother or sister? How much time do they spend eating? <laughs> Say it out loud. All day. <laughs> they eat all the time, don't they? Infant dreams, we used to joke that they do three things. They eat, they sleep, and they soil their diapers. All the time. Well, when God gives us a dream, we have to feed it all the time. All the time. And depending on what our dream is on what we're going to feed it, we might have to feed it with education. We might have to feed it by hanging out with the right crowd morally and spiritually. We might have to feed it with prayer. We might have to feed it with scripture. But whatever that dream requires, we have to feed it. I, um, I see Sister Washington. She, both of the Sister Washingtons, they're athletes. They have to feed that dream with working out and eating right and lifting weights and go. Don't y'all have to feed that dream? And if they don't feed it, it won't grow. You know, people think athletes should just come out the box put together. They spend hours feeding their dream. Hours feeding their dream. I, I shared with the uh, church school group that the, one of the first big dreams God gave me was to become a military chaplain. That sounds easy. No. It meant four years of college, three years of graduate school, Two years of professional ministry, getting endorsed, getting ordained, and then becoming a chaplain. All my early marriage, and Sister Black is uh, with her mother with COVID-19 precautions today. No one's exposed, but mom's senior, and we don't want mom to be exposed. Uh, but she'll tell you, she spent her early marriage proofing papers, helping her husband get to school, doing double duty as a mom and a dad because the dream required that. Next slide. Growing dreams support the dreamer during difficult times. Now, Joseph is in prison in this scene. Joseph is in prison. And his dream got him through it. Your dream will get you through bad situations if you got a real dream. How many of you have heard of Tyler Perry? Which a couple of you have. Everybody has. You know that brother lived in a car homeless? How could he live in a car homeless? He had a dream. And that dream said, okay, it won't be like this forever. Just make it through this season and everything's going to be all right. That's how your dreams talk to you. And so we need to realize that our dreams will talk to us like that. And when we're in difficult situations, our dreams support us. Next slide. Healthy dreams outgrow the dreamer. Now, when ML King was talking about his dream, he might have thought that was for him. King's dead, y'all. That dream was for more than him. The dream for me to be a chaplain was for more than me. The dream for these um, athletes right here is for more than them. How much inspiration do we get in our lives from athletes? I do. Oh, yes. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, I skipped this. Okay, we're going back to number five. <laughs> Con uh, dreams are contagious. It's important that we infect somebody with our dream. Not like COVID, but y'all see how easy COVID transmits? We got to infect teachers and uh, mentors and other people with our dream. I I'm going through a book, a, a, a book right now that's a fictional book. But in the book, the young man infects his coach with his dream. He can't play basketball worth a lick. But his coach sees that he wants to. And his coach gives him extra attention because his coach got infected with his dream. Now, you know how the book's going to end up. The boy's going to be shooting hoops, right? 
so many times. And, and in my life, there was a chaplain named Chaplain Smith. And I went to Chaplain Smith's office and I said, I want to be a chaplain. And, and Chaplain Smith counseled me and those kind of things. Chaplain Smith stayed with me. And here's the crazy, crazy thing. He wrote one of my recommendations to go to seminary. He stayed with me from no education to getting ready to go to graduate school. Wouldn't be standing before you if Chaplain Smith had not got infected by my dream. We have to be sure to infect somebody with our dreams. So that's number five. Number six, we did, correct? So now we're on number seven. See all those people up there? Doctors, contractors, electricians, lawyers, all kind of business people. Those are people who are living their dream. Say this with me. I'm going to say it first and then we'll say it together. Dreams do come true. Let's say it together. Dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. Amen? At this point, we're going to have our cahoots. Can we put cahoots up? Dreams do come true. Okay, you see the numbers? 834-6185. Put that into your device. 834-6185. Okay, eight three four six one eight five. Eight three four six one eight five. For the older young at hearts, you just go to uh, if you Google Kahoot, play it'll show you where to put the number in, and once you do that, you're okay. Okay, are we ready? No. Yes, a few more. 834-6185. Are we ready in the house? I'm saying like we say in the board minute. Any unreadiness? Okay, let's get started. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream was inspired by a late night pizza, the American dream, a movie he watched, his favorite song. What's your answer? Late night movie. Oh, I don't know. I want to tell you anything. Okay. The answer is the American dream. Next slide. The ward parents are tearing it up, tearing it up. Amen. Next question. True or false? Spiritual dreams always make sense. True or false? Spiritual dreams always make sense. The answer is false. 
Let's see how, how our contestants have done. Kaylee just moved on in there, moved right on up. Amen. Next question. Infant dreams require late night TV, nothing special, intense nurturing, a dark room. What do infant dreams require? I missed the joke. <laughs> well, that wasn't the answer. The answer was intense nurturing. <laughs> intense nurturing. Kaylee's still hanging in there. Amen. Next, next question. True or false? Aborted dreams never come to pass. True or false? Aborted dreams never come to pass. The answer is true. Next slide. Oh, Kaylee's hanging in there. She's hanging in there. Next slide. True or false? A healthy growing dream can support you during difficult times. Should be during difficult times. True or false? And the answer is true. Let's see what the standings are. Oh, Kaylee's still hanging in there. It's getting tight. She's still hanging in there. Next slide. Number six. Healthy dreams are contagious. True or false? Healthy dreams are contagious. The answer is true. True. And let's see what the board, leaderboard. Kaylee's still hanging in there. It's tight. It's tight. It could go any, either way now. Next question. True or false? Your dream is only for you. True or false? Your dream is only for you. No one else is going to benefit from your dream. It's only for you. False. False. Your dream is to bless other people. Oh, getting tight, getting tight. All right. Uh, Kaylee's still at the top of the leaderboard. Next question. Number eight. True or false? Dreams never come true. Dreams never come true. The, well, four, three. The answer is false. Dreams do come true all the time, all the time. And leaderboard, we lost it. Oh, we're going to have a riot up in here today. <laughs> True or false? Anything man-made might crash. <laughs> They've been doing a great, great job, and they're short-handed today. They've been doing an outstanding job short-handed. A AV team, could you maybe just tell us? Ah, uh, could you tell us where we are with just how far we've gone, and we could give awards based on what? Kaylee, number one, number two. Dav, who's Dav? Maybe in, in cyberspace. And who's number three?
we'll figure it out. I think they can look back and, and see too. So we'll make sure the first, second, and third person, place person get their special encouragement. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of us are going to go work on our dreams after today's sermon? Amen. We're going to invite the young voices of praise back to the choir stand. Come on back up, young voices of praise. The biggest dream God will ever give us is to become one of his children. We're all born sinners, and there's nothing we could do about it. But Jesus Christ came into the world and died for our sins. We can allow the substitutional work of Jesus Christ to put our sin on his account and his righteousness on our account. We're going to ask everyone to stand as we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship to you and to you and to you. as your Lord and Savior. You can just repeat this prayer with me and God will meet you right where you are today. Just pray with me. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Come into my heart. Save me in Jesus' name. Amen. It's just that easy. If you invited him into your heart, he's in your heart right now there to reign and rule forever. Now join me now as we all reaffirm our faith. Light in unison, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. you before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever Brother Isaac, Brother Isaac is asking for the floor. Oh, after the service. No, you want to speak to me now? Oh, okay. Uh, young folks, you, you may go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Young folks, there's an incentive table here. Uh, grab one item off the incentive table. We're going to put you on the honor society today. Got it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 